In this tutorial, I'll review some of the built-in boring cycles in the Mazatrol programming system. Start by navigating to the program page. I have an existing program I'll be adding the bore to. I'll verify I'm in the right program and select program edit. Pretty much everything on this print is dimensioned to the center of this bore. Due to the precision required, I'm going to bring this hole to size and position using a boring bar. At the bottom of the existing program, I'll start a new unit and select point machining. When choosing the machining unit, always choose the final state of the hole. In this case we want the hole brought from a solid piece to a precision bore. To specify the use of carbide tooling, I'll highlight high speed drill use, and select boring. To further define the process, I can choose. Boring through the part, non through hole boring, step through hole boring, and step non through hole boring. The manual excerpts shown, illustrate how detailed, each type of bore is defined in the manual. Refer to the Mazatrol programming manual, point machining section, for these definitions. In our case, I'll choose through hole boring. Bore diameter is 1.75. I'll set the bore depth to 0.35. And I want a 20 thousandths chamfer. Wall roughness, tells the control how many tools to use in the process development. This manual excerpt shows how this works, and can be found in your Mazatrol programming manual. For my purposes, I'll go mid-range to a 4. As you can see, the control has called for 4 different tools to build this hole. This selection of tools will work fine, but I'll modify it a bit. For the drill, I have a 1 inch insert drill and tool data. I'll go to the tool data window and select it, replacing the 1.51 drill. Hole diameter will be 1 inch. Hole depth, I'll take a little deeper to 0.45 inches. I'll reduce feed rate at 0.25 inches from the bottom to break through cleanly at the bottom of the hole. And I'll reduce my feed to 35% at that point. I'll use a standard drilling cycle, and set my peck depth to 1 inch. By setting my peck depth to greater than the hole depth, the drill will never peck. I'll set SFM and feed rate with insert auto. And set through tool coolant on with an M51. I'm going to replace the step boring bar with an end mill to interpolate the hole larger. I'll highlight the first boring bar, and choose end mill. Going to the tool data window, I'll select my 0.5 cn mill, and click OK. For the hole diameter, I'll set 1.73 inches. I like the given depth of 0.39. The existing prepared hole is 1 inch. For cutting direction, I'll choose counterclockwise for climb milling. I'll set a 3 for finish allowance, and set my width of cut to 0.125 inches. I'll select auto set for my SFM and feed rate. That's a little slow so I'll bump up my SFM a bit. And I'll turn M51 off, and M8 on for flood coolant. For the final boring bar, I'll use the 1.75 I have in tool data. Hole diameter and depth look good. The control has chosen boring cycle 1 by default. This cycle bores to the bottom, orients the spindle, backs the tool away from the side of the bore, then retracts. This is a perfectly good cycle, but the boring bar has to be aligned to the axis perfectly to use it. By default, the boring bar would back off in the Y positive direction. Alternatively, I can also leave the spindle running and either wrap it out of the hole in G00, or feed out of the hole with AG1. The other three cycles shown are the same but allow for a pecking depth to work into a deep hole gradually. I'm going to change to cycle 3 which will leave the spindle running, and feed out. Top surface to feed start point is for offset tip boring bars. Entering a value here will cause the measured point of the boring bar to plunge further into the bore and wrap it, before starting to feed. Normally, a boring bar starts to feed at the R plane above a hole, in this case the R plane is 0.1 inch. If I enter 0.2 here, the boring bar would wrap it into the bore 0.1 inch, which is the new R plane, then start the feed through the bore. My boring bar cutting tip is at the tip of the bar, so no offset is needed. Bottom face roughness has different meaning for different boring cycles. In general, setting a roughness of zero implies no finish on the bottom surfaces and the cycle is simply down and out. With different values, movement at the bottom of the bore is handled differently. 
These manual excerpts illustrate some of the possible movements. See the Mesa Troll programming manual for more details. Width of cut can affect feed rate calculation. I'll just leave the default. I'll use Carbide Auto for SFM and feed rate. And make sure coolant is on with an M8. For the chamfering tool, I'll use the tool data window to select my 1 inch chamfer tool. Tool diameter interference is used in conjunction with prepared hole depth. When calculating the depth the chamfer tool is positioned to when chamfering the hole. If there is an interfering surface near the OD of the hole, enter its position here as a diameter value. I'll leave the default value since my tool is small and the plate has no protrusions. The chamfer is formed at Z0. The hole to chamfer is 1.75 inches in diameter. Depth of the hole is 0.35. Width of the chamfer is 20 thousandths. I'll auto set SFM and feed rate. And make sure flood coolant is on. My point cutting pattern is a single point. The hole starts at Z0. Its position is X0, Y0. Path to the hole is direct. I don't want to omit any holes. And I'll return to initial Z after the bore. Highlighting the unit shows the work I'll be doing in the graphic window. I'll add a temporary end unit and go to simulation to watch the process run. The flexibility of the point machining, boring cycle, has made it simple to replace tools as desired. Despite the point machining process being designed for boring bars, I was able to seamlessly add a contouring end milling sequence, just by changing the tool. Going back to the program page, I'll delete the temporary end unit, and I'm ready to continue programming the part.